Hello, I'm Phil Stazak. In this video, we will be demonstrating how to perform a general startup on an indirect fired makeup air unit. Before beginning work on any air handling equipment, it is important to adhere to safety standards. Be sure to wear appropriate personal protection equipment, PPE. You will also need the following tools for the procedures described in this video. This is a startup showing the Accurex Indirect Gas Fired Model XIGX112H22. Your model may vary slightly depending on the selected configuration and control options. The unit serial tag located on the main disconnect of the unit will identify your particular model. Before startup, it is important to familiarize yourself with the unit's layout and components. Refer to the unit's installation, operation, and maintenance manual. This can be found at accurex.com by entering the model in your search bar. The Model X IGX will typically have three separate manuals associated with the unit. One specific to the X IGX, another specific to the furnace, and lastly, one associated with the furnace controller, menus and operation. Access doors will be locked when shipped from the factory. To unlock the doors, use a size three hex key and turn the screw located in the door handle counterclockwise until the handle rotates open freely. The indirect gas fired quick start guide, as well as the unit's ladder diagram, is located in the interior of the electrical control center access doors. Furnace and unit control centers will have separate access doors. You will also want to reference the startup section of the IOM for a complete startup procedure, as well as a section to document your startup data. The quick start guide is intended for a quick reference only. A discharge temp sensor will be located in the last furnace module and will need to be installed downstream in the ductwork to ensure accurate discharge temperature readings. Begin by rotating the fan wheel by hand to be sure everything moves freely. Check the plenum fan radial overlap and wheel alignment. Refer to the supply fan pre-start checks section located in the IOM for specific dimensions. To energize the unit's control circuits, reference the field wired control points on the unit's ladder diagram. Anything that will require field wired controls will be represented with dashed lines on the diagram. For proper unit operation, optional ship loose accessories may need to be wired into the provided terminals represented on the various diagrams. R is constant 24 volt power from the transformer. Connecting terminals R and G will give the unit a call for fan on. Connecting terminal R and W1 will enable a call for heat. If a cooling option is selected, it will be enabled through terminal Y1. Connecting a jumper between terminals R and Y1 will enable a call for cooling. If an optional exhaust fan starter was selected with the unit, connecting terminals R and H will enable the exhaust fan. Verify the incoming supply voltage matches the unit information label. Toggle the unit's disconnect handle to energize the unit. If the unit is supplied with an inlet damper, it will be energized open with a call for fan. Verify the supply fan blower is rotating in the correct direction. If the blower is rotating in reverse direction, de-energize the unit and swap any two power leads that go to the motor. Check the motor amp draw and compare the results to the motor nameplate, full load amps, FLA. If the amp draw is greater than the FLA, reduce the fan's airflow. If equipped with a factory supplied variable frequency drive, you can read the motor amp draw by pressing the up arrow on the VFD three times. Using a tachometer, measure the fan RPM of the blower and compare the results to the unit design. Before commissioning the furnace, locate the furnace data label. Verify the gas type and that you are supplying the minimum gas pressure required to the unit. Be sure not to exceed the unit's maximum gas pressure rating. Adjust or add an external gas supply regulator if needed. Each furnace module is considered its own appliance and will require a separate gas supply line and need to be individually vented if mounted indoors. Please refer to the PVF PVG IOM for further details on installing of gas pipe and venting methods. Each furnace will have its own individual control center as well as individual ladder diagram located on the inside of the furnace control center door. If you have multiple furnaces, the last furnace in line will be considered the primary or master furnace. The primary furnace's control center will have the furnace controller or expansion board if the unit was selected with a microprocessor in the unit's main control center. 
The furnace controller or microprocessor is where the set points can be adjusted as well as access to a commissioning menu that will walk you through an indirect gas-fired startup. Energize the unit's main disconnect and be sure that a call for fan has been enabled through Terminal G. Locate the furnace controller or unit microprocessor and enter the furnace commissioning menu. Ensure that there are no active alarms. If active alarms are present, view the alarm and take the corrective action necessary to resolve or clear the alarm by pressing and holding the alarm button for three seconds. When no active alarms are present, press the program key of the controller. A menu will come up asking for a password to be inserted. With the cursor flashing under the first digit, press the up arrow once to change the zero to a one. Press the enter key for each remaining digits to enter the required password of 1000. This will then bring you to the main menus. Scroll down to the service menu G and press enter. Scroll down to commissioning B and press enter. You are now in the commissioning mode that will take you step by step through a proper startup. Simply follow the steps provided and change the question complete at the bottom of the screen from no to yes to move forward as you complete each task. Step one is to enter the gas type. This will allow the controller to tell you the proper gas pressure to adjust to. Press enter to move your cursor down to the gas type. Press the up arrow to change to LP if this is your gas type. In this example, we will be supplying natural gas to our furnace. Press enter on the desired gas type to move down to the complete section. Press the up or down arrow to change the answer to yes. This will prompt the next screen, which tells you to hook up a gas manometer to the outlet of the combination valve. This is the first factory installed valve on the gas train. Once you have properly hooked up your manometer to the valve, press enter to move down to complete and change the no to yes. This will then start the furnace in high fire and tell you to adjust the outlet pressure to five inches water column. Adjust the valve until you see the proper outlet gas pressure. A clockwise turn on the adjustment screw will raise gas pressure and a counterclockwise turn will decrease gas pressure. Once five inches water column is achieved, press the enter button on the controller and change the no to yes. This will then de-energize the furnace and tell you to hook up the gas manometer to the furnace manifold. After properly hooking up to the manifold, press enter and change the complete from no to yes. This will then re-engage the furnace in high fire and tell you what to adjust manifold pressure to. In this case, with natural gas, it will be 3.5 inches water column. This adjustment is done on the electronic modulating valve located after the combination valve on the gas train. Remove the two side screws from the blue cover on the valve. This will expose a printed circuit board with buttons located on the upper left and right hand corners of the board. There is also a red LED indicator light located near the middle of this board. To adjust the high fire rate, press and hold the left button until the LED light turns solid red. This is telling you that you are now in high fire adjustment mode. You can now press the button to the left to raise gas pressure and the button on the right will lower gas pressure. Once the manifold pressure reads three and a half inches water column, you can now press and hold both buttons simultaneously until the red LED status light shuts off. This saves the adjustment value. Press enter on the controller and change the complete question from no to yes. The furnace will now modulate down to the lowest fire rate. The screen will prompt you to adjust the manifold pressure to 0.33 inches water column for natural gas. This adjustment is also done with the electronic modulating valve, but now for low fire adjustment, you will press and hold the right button on the circuit board. When the LED indicator light begins to flash red, this is telling you that you are now in the low fire adjustment mode and can now make pressure changes. Just like the high fire adjustment, the left button raises gas pressure and the right button lowers gas pressure. Make the necessary adjustments until the proper low fire manifold pressure is achieved on your manometer. Then press and hold both buttons until the flashing LED light turns off. Low fire rate has now been saved. Move back to the controller and press enter to change the no to yes on the low fire adjustment prompt. 
The furnace will now modulate back into high fire to verify that the pressure adjustment safe. If the high fire manifold pressure still reads 3.5 inches water column and the combustion fan ramped up to high speed, simply change the complete from no to yes. The furnace will then modulate back down to low fire to verify that adjustment saved. If the manifold pressure still reads 0.33 inches water column and the combustion fan speed ramped down to low speed, press enter on the controller and change the complete from no to yes. The screen will now prompt you to test the high limit trip. Remove any wire from the high limit thermal disc and verify that the furnace shuts off. If the furnace shuts off, press enter on the screen and change the no to yes. Now place the wire back on the furnace to ensure that it restarts. If the furnace restarts, press enter on the controller and change the no to yes. You have now successfully commissioned an indirect gas fired furnace. If a high turndown furnace option was selected, you will have a split manifold with two of these electronic modulating valves on a single furnace. The same commissioning sequence needs to be applied to both gas trains if your furnace has this configuration. If you have a second or third furnace, additional screens will appear to prompt commissioning for those furnaces. These furnaces will either have a two-stage valve, like the example here, or a single-stage valve. The screens will prompt the required gas pressure setting for each additional furnace. On a two-stage valve, the high fire can be adjusted by turning the 2.5 hex screw labeled high on the valve clockwise to increase and counterclockwise to decrease the gas pressure. The same applies to the adjustment to the low fire on the hex screw labeled low. On a single stage gas valve, adjustment to the pressure is done by removing the large slotted screw cap located on the valve. The adjustment screw is located under this cap. Turning this clockwise increases gas pressure and counterclockwise decreases gas pressure. Once all furnaces have been commissioned following the on-screen instructions, you can press escape on the controller until you get back to the main menus. Go to the set points menu C and make the necessary temperature and reference adjustments according to your desired application. To verify all components and fittings are free of leaks, a final leak check on all gas fittings should be completed. You have now successfully completed a startup on an Acurex indirect fired makeup air unit. For further information, please visit our website at Acurex.com. You can also contact our technical support team at 1-800-371-6858. Thank you for choosing Acurex.